The other thing we have to be concerned about is neck fractures. So because concussion is acceleration of the head, obviously there's gonna be a tremendous amount of force that's also going through the neck, which leaves you open to having a neck fracture. Obviously neck fractures are gonna be very serious, potential paralysis, potential death, depending on the level that they're at. So we wanna be very sure about this. So this, this is what's called the Canadian C-spine rules, which are what we use to determine who should get an X-ray of the neck. So this rule is meant for people, again, that have a Glasgow Coma Scale of 15 out of 15, so they're fully alert and conscious, uh, and they're stable trauma patients where cervical spine injury is a concern. Obviously, if they're unstable or their GCS is lower or they're unconscious, they're probably just going to give them an x-ray to be safe anyway, uh, but this is for people that are alert and conscious and we're concerned that there may be a neck injury involved. So there's three parts to this, and it's generally if part one, if you fail part one, you get an x-ray. If you pass part one, you move on to part two. If you fail part two, you get an x-ray. If you pass part two, you move on to part three. If you fail part three, you get an x-ray. So any of these parts along the path, if you fail them, you get an x-ray. If not, and you pass everything, you get no x-ray. So this is kind of a, a checklist of pe for, for ER docs to follow. So part one, if they are aged 65 years or older, or if they have a dangerous mechanism, which what I said before is the same dangerous mechanism, pedestrian struck by a vehicle, occupant ejected from a vehicle, or a fall from an elevation of three or more feet, or five stairs. So age 65 or older, or dangerous mechanism, or paresthesias, meaning numbness, tingling, into the extremities. If they have yes to any one of those three, then they get an x-ray. So if they've been involved in some sort of trauma and they're 65 years or older, they should probably get an x-ray just based on bone density and, and everything else. Uh, medication use that can leach calcium from bones, etc. If they've had a dangerous mechanism, get an x-ray. Or if they have any numbness in their extremities, they get an x-ray. If they don't have any of those three, they move on to part two. So part two is a little bit different because this one, if they answer no to any of these following questions, they get an x-ray. If they answer yes to all of them, they move on to part three. So was the, if it was a motor vehicle accident, was it a simple rear end collision? Meaning was it just a little fender bender? If the answer is yes, well then you move on to the next question. If the answer is no, meaning it was a more serious collision, they get an x-ray. So this excludes being pushed into oncoming traffic, being hit by a bus slash large truck, a rollover, or being hit by a high speed vehicle. So if you're in a, in a collision and it's any of those ones, um, that doesn't count. That means you get an x-ray. <laughs> um, are they able to sit up in the emergency department? Meaning, are they sitting up or are they lying down on a gurney unable to sit up under their own power? If they are not able to sit up, they get an x-ray. If they are, they don't. Ambulatory, meaning they can walk around uh, at any time. Delayed onset of neck pain, meaning if the, if the onset of neck pain is immediate, then x-ray if the onset of neck pain is delayed then no x-ray absence of midline c-spine tenderness so if you feel down the midline of somebody's neck you can feel the bony prominences the spinous processes that stick out if any of those are tender to push on then that person should get an x-ray okay so if they answer no to any of these simple rear end collision are they able to sit uh, or were they ambulatory at any time? Did they have a delayed onset of neck pain? Absence of C-spine tenderness. If no to any one of those, they should get an x-ray. If yes to all of them, they move on to part three. And part three is, are they able to rotate their neck side to side in each direction by 45 degrees or more? Or do they get blocked at a certain point and they can't rotate any more than 10 degrees? If they can rotate fully 45 degrees or more in each direction, uh, that means no radiographs if they've gone through everything else and you've passed the rule. If they can't rotate it, then they go and get x-rays. Now the way that we use this is on the sidelines so that if a patient gets hit and they're down on the field and you're going out there as a first responder or an AT, the first thing we do is we stabilize the neck so that they're not, you know, not moving and then we kind of start asking them some questions like, you know, do you have any pain, numbness, tingling into your arms or legs? Um, are you, um, you know, are you able to wiggle your fingers? Do you have motor, you know, function of your arms uh, and and feet? So you get them starting in the in the smaller portions and then gradually building up. 
And then you start feeling around the back of their neck and you start pushing on the spinous processes. Do any of these cause you know, a lot of pain? And are any of them very tender? If they are tender, well then we keep them there and we call you know, the ambulance to come and transport them to the hospital. If those aren't tender, then we try to see, okay, can, we, can they rotate their head in either direction? So we kind of remove our, st our, our stabilization. We say, can you rotate your head to the left? And if they can get more than 45 degrees, they come back to middle. Okay, can you rotate your head to the right? Okay, good. Now you've just done your checklist for C-spine fractures and you've ruled it out. Now you help them to sit up, okay? And then you can get them from sitting to standing and they can walk off the field. But that initial part, when you go out there, you don't know what's taking place. They could have a neck fracture. And so that's why it's important to kind of stabilize and run through a particular checklist to make sure you rule that out before you try to get them up to walk off the field. Thank you.